So hi guys, uh, good morning all of you. <clears throat> guys audible? <clears throat> okay, right. <clears throat> so in the last class, uh, okay. So I think so we started <clears throat> recycling, okay, after dropping your table. So whenever you want to drop your table from your database, okay, uh, what we said here before Oracle 10G Enterprise Edition, once we drop a table from database, uh, that was uh, permanent dropping. And, uh, <clears throat> and we said here, uh, from, from Oracle 10G Enterprises onwards, okay, whenever you want to drop your table, okay, so that was uh, temporarily dropping. Okay, so that is what uh, we discussed in the last class. Okay, and uh, after dropping your table, to we want <coughs> we want to restore your table. So we have you know, uh, some features are introduced in Oracle Ten G Enterprise. Okay, so one is called the Recycle, Flashback, and Perl. Okay, so these are the uh, the features was introduced here. And in this, uh, one of the future we discuss. Okay, so that future is uh, recycle bin. <coughs> so recycle bin, uh, we said it is one of the predefined table and uh, stores some information about the drop tables. Okay, and uh, it's look like uh, and similar to Windows recycle bin in your computer. Okay, so how the recycle bin in our computer we are using the same pattern. <coughs> The recycle bin also we are using in our Oracle database. Okay, now so now here <coughs> to view the structure of recycle bin. Okay, so we are using desk recycle bin. The statement we are using. Okay, now and uh, next one is what now uh, when you want to select uh, <coughs> some information about uh, drop table. So the information where it was stored means uh, we said yeah, recycle bin. And that information, if I want to see it, uh, so I can call this uh, a particular column uh, from the recycle bin table. Okay, so the columns are object name as well as original underscore name. Okay, right. And uh, later on, uh, after deleted here, okay, now we are getting now. <coughs> later, if you want to restore in your, uh, what we can say, command uh, table, okay. Then we are using what now flashback command. Okay, so flashback command is a command uh, which is used to restore a table from recycle bin to database. Okay, and this is your flashback command. Okay, the command syntax I was given here, and by using of the syntax, you can go to restore your drop table <coughs> into your database. Now. Okay, right. So up to here we discussed in the last class, right? Now. And uh, next uh, command in this, uh, the third one, okay. So what now? Perg command, okay, we use it. And basically per command we are using uh, when you want to drop a table, uh, permanently if you want to drop a table, okay, from your database or else uh, from your recycle bin. So there we can use, <coughs> okay, there, uh, there we can. So guys, uh, actually I'm, I'm, I'm not able to speak loudly. Okay, so uh, minimum voice I will give it now. So please uh, try to understand me because I'm not well. So that's why I'm slowly speaking out. Okay, so maximum try to understand this lesson, okay? <coughs> yeah. So minimum level, I will follow it to minimum level. Okay, now. right. So the part <coughs> So the perk command, okay, so this command uh, purpose is of what it, what it was. The perk command purpose is means uh, uh, when we want to drop a table uh, from your database, okay, permanently or else uh, from your day, uh, from your recycle bin permanently. So there we can use what now, perk command, <clears throat> okay. So that means we can say uh, to drop a table, <clears throat> Permanently. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise, okay, we can drop 
to drop a table from the recycle bin from database. So directly we are taking from database. Okay, so permanently. So the two cases I'm using. Once you want to drop your table <coughs> from from recycle bin permanently, how to drop? So that is the one uh, one operation, and the second operation is what now? Uh, not only recycle bin, we can directly drop our table from database. So that also we can do it by. You know? So here one by one, I will show you guys here. <coughs> So the, the syntax one is what now? Uh, to drop a specific, to drop a specific table, <coughs> specific table from recycle. Okay, from recycle. Okay. So a yes, specific. Uh, okay. Uh, permanently. Specific or specific table. Uh, if you want to drop, okay, from recycle bin permanently. So my syntax will be this one. Okay, my syntax will be this one. The syntax is called as what now? Per per table table name. So per table table name. So this is. Uh, one syntax uh, whenever you want to drop your table from your uh, recycle bin and not all tables you are dropping only specific right for example let you come out and see what tables. okay So in the in the previous session, so one table we dropped here, sir. No? <clears throat> in previous table, okay. So select so a start from tab. So this is one table we have, guys. Here the table name is student table. Okay, right. So now what we want to do guys here, so I will be create a few more tables in our database, okay? That's one, for example, so serial number, <coughs> some name, okay, this is one table we design. <coughs> and one more table I'm creating. Guys, yes, number two. Okay. Okay, that's test number two. This is one more table. So present in my database. Okay. So present in my database. So tab. If you want to go for to check out here, <coughs> there are total three tables are there, guys. Student table, test one table, and a test two table. So total, there are three tables uh, we designed in our database. Okay, right. But in this, let you see. For example, I'm going to drop in the tables like uh, drop table, the table test one. I'm dropping in one table. In the same pattern, I'm going to drop in the test number two. Okay, the two tables I drop it here. But in this uh, dropping statement, I'm not using any perk statement. I'm not using in this uh, drop command. So just normally drop table <coughs> table. Name. So that was we taken out. Okay, right. So after that, what we said guys here, if you want to come back and call uh, your tab. Okay, so your object in recycle bin, in recycle bin, so whatever the object address was there, so that address was going to be showing here. The address is going to be showing here. Okay, now right. This is what the address of this. And uh, these things are uh, whatever we okay dropped here. 
of those things. So having another recycle bin, it will be stored. So <coughs> original under check the address name and uh, original underscore name table name test one. And this is second one object address name and test two. So now there are multiple tables was there in this recycling bin, okay? But in this multiple tables, which was there in the recycling bin, I want to drop a from my, okay, I want to drop from my recycling. Okay, now, so when you want to drop in like this, let you come back, for example, the same scenario, uh, when you go to your recycling bin, the Windows recycling bin just open now. So when I open Windows recycling bin, so your test one already one file was there. In the same pattern, guys, here, suppose one more uh, file I'm creating now. <clears throat> so test number two. So this is second file. Okay, I was created now. So after created second file, Okay, after created second file. So this file I'm going to delete it again. So this file also storing under recycle bin. And let you see guys here in your recycle bin, there are two files are there, test one and test two. Okay now. So now in your recycle bin, there are multiple documents and multiple files are there. Suppose in these two files, test one and test two, if I want to draw. Recording in progress. Are you sure? Are you sure you want to permanently delete this file? So this one message is coming from us. Okay, coming from system and telling us, is it uh, okay? Is it confirmation like, uh, are you deleting your file permanently? <clears throat> so the statement is going to be asking to us. And now you say, yes, I want to delete permanently. So I just go to click on my yes button. I just click on yes button. After click on yes button, the test one file is uh, dropping from. So from where are you deleted means, are you deleted from where now? Recycle bin. Are you deleted from where now? Recycle bin. So it was dropping here. So once it was dropping from recycle bin, now tell me guys here, now your test one table, is it a temporary dropping or permanent dropping now? Yes, now it is permanently dropped. Now it is permanently dropped. So the same scenario when you come back to the same scenario when you come back to here. So in my recycle bin, in my recycle bin, so there are two tables are there. In these two tables, any one table I have to drop, then I'm using this one. So per table, suppose table name is test one. So when I'm using the table name is, okay, so, okay, so now, <clears throat> So now what happened per table test one, okay now, right? Per table test one. So now I'm using, and in this, so the test one table only we are dropping. So let you come out guys here. So the test one table drop. So table is perfect. And after that, let you go and check out your recycle bin. Okay, check out your recycle bin. Okay, 
so now your test one is dropping your test one is dropping okay na right and later what it will happen for example this test one table is permanently dropping or not suppose you have a some doubt is there so now let you see guys here to use your okay i'm using what now flashback flashback table and table name is test one okay to before drop to before drop suppose i'm using guys here so flashback table test one to before drop let you see what it was happen it was clearly showing us your test one table is not in recycle bin okay na your test one table is not in recycle bin okay so that means the table test one is uh, already we dropped from your recycle bin permanently so that was not there in the recycle bin it's a clear output a clear error message it will be showing us okay na? right so that means your test one is a permanently dropped now if you want to come back and see your list of for table okay by using of tab see here also i have a student and one okay the test two object address is there but test one object address is not there. so not there means what you understand guys here so the table is permanently dropped from your database okay na so this is one scenario to specific one you can go to drop from recycle bin okay na now in the next one is what now guys here for example suppose suppose are you created one more okay the file i'm creating now so this file name is test number 3 after that this file is selected okay after that this file is selected and i am deleting now so now just come to your recycle bin now in recycle bin how many uh, files are there means two files are there test 2 and test 3 so now in this recycle bin total number of files whatever it was there how many files are there how many documents are there so that all files are at a time i have to delete permanently so now what we are going to do we are selecting the complete files all files i am selecting in my recycle bin and click right mouse button and click on delete operation so now it was asking are you sure you want to permanently delete two items you are clearly mentioning to us the two items are you sure you want to that means two items means two or five items means five or 10 items means 10 so how many files are there in this recycle bin so the all files i need to okay delete now permanently so i'm saying yes but i'm saying as yes, what it was happened that how many files are there that all files are deleted from recycle bin permanently so now what happened now my recycle bin is a empty folder so there is no files here nothing was there in the recycle bin my recycle bin is a empty folder okay my recycle bin is a empty folder so in in the in this case what we did here we are dropping all tables or you are dropping all files and documents which was there in the recycle bin <coughs> okay so this is what we call as guys here okay second operation okay and the same operation uh, when you want to do it okay in your database uh, let you come back and see suppose uh, i have in my recycle bin now we have only one and again i'm creating one table okay again i'm creating one table so create table the table name is test number 3 okay so some salary okay one more table i'm creating in my database test number again this table i'm going to dropping from my database okay so test number 3 and uh, this table is also where it will be means uh, it will be having in your the recycle bin so now i just call my recycle bin now so again test 3 and test 2 multiple tables are there so in your recycle bin memory okay so now what i am going to do in here the second syntax is what now 
So what is my second syntax? This is first one, right? So this is first one. And we set the per table. And table name is test one. Okay, we done. And the second one is what now? Syntax number two. In syntax number two to drop okay your non specific table to drop all tables to drop all tables tables from recycle bin permanently okay now so all tables i want to drop it here so in my syntax okay so simple here we set pass your per okay recycle bin okay now this is one. So this is simple syntax I'm using guys here, the perk recycle bin. When I'm using perk recycle bin, so in your recycle bin, how many number of tables are there? Okay, that all tables are at a time we are going to be dropping from your table. Okay, now dropping from your table. So now let me come back and see guys here. Let me come back and see. Okay, now in my recycle bin, there are two tables are there. Suppose I was applied here. The perk statement I'm going to be passing now. So perk and I'm passing the recycle bin. And to execute this one. So complete your recycle bin is a perk. Complete your recycle bin is a perk. And after that, you just come back and see your recycle bin. You can call and what it was happened. So in your recycle bin, there is a no table. There is a no table. So that all tables are permanently dropping from your recycle bin. Permanently dropping from your recycle bin. Okay, now so this is what it was happening as here. And same to same when I come to when I come to my database uh, okay, tab also, you can see. So only student tables only left uh, in my database tab list, uh, but there is no other tables. The test one, test two, test three, all are we are going to be dropped. All are we are going to be dropped okay now. so this is what it was happened guys okay and uh, this is one scenario okay the scenarios is the second one syntax so here what i'm telling you here, here a specific table from recycle bin how to drop permanently this is one task here and one operation and second one is telling us all tables are we are dropping from recycle bin permanently this is second so in the next one is what now the syntax number three in the syntax number three, what it was happen? Okay, to drop a table, to drop a table from database, from database, permanently. So this is not uh, uh, from recycling. This is directly from database. Okay, when you want to go for database permanently, so now how we can go to drop it here also. So the syntax was okay. So what is the syntax here? Okay. So drop table, and I have to give my table name. So I have to give my table name and to pass per statement. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to making the per command statement. We are adding at the time of a dropping table. Okay, now. So when you want to add here, okay, then directly and permanently, it was dropping or deleting from your database, not recycling. Okay? This is directly we are going to be deleting from database. Okay, so that is what's in our here. And let you come back, guys. Here, so now come out and see. So now I'm going to create a one table that you find out guys here. So create table. The table name is, for example, uh, test number eleven. Okay, now suppose some EID I was prepared here. Okay, now. so now here we are going to be, okay, here we go to be, so create a table, table, one table I was created. And this table successfully, okay, this table successfully, we can drop it here. So now select the start from tab, let you see, the table is there in my, recycle in my memory. Okay, in my memory, that was there. Okay, so, student and test 11 was there suppose i need to drop this test 11 from okay drop up table and table name is a test 11 okay and along with this i'm using per statement i'm using
okay na? so now i am using so drop table test level for the state suppose if i am using the purge statement okay what it was happening you can see so drop table test level and purge statement if i am using table successfully drop but after dropping this table let you see in my tab so there is no table the test level is not showing here in my tab list so tab list it was not showing that is one thing and uh, the object address is also not there in the tab list that is the second point observe okay object what we can say guys here object address is also not showing in my tab list okay so so that means what you understand guys here your table is a permanently dropped and later if you want to go for your recycle bin suppose i am going to recycle bin so in recycle bin is also it was showing no rows are selected so that means whatever the test level table i am dropping from the database memory so that was permanently be dropped here and the table will not go to any recycle bin okay na? now for example let us see guys here same scenario when i am going to go for in my computer and i'm going to my computer so for example here i'm creating test level so guys tell me suppose this file this document okay whatever the file is there in my computer the test level so this file if i want to permanently drop from my computer so what we can do guys is there any is there any operation we have to use here to permanently drop from computer directly yes we are using so what we are using guys here to select this file and we we selected shift plus delete so shift plus delete so these keys when i am using from the keyboard shift plus delete then directly it was asking to me are you sure you want to permanently delete this file are you sure you want to permanently delete this file okay if i say yes if i say yes then what happened guys here your file test 11 is successfully deleted but this test 11 file whatever i deleted by using of shift plus delete command by using of shift plus delete uh, shortcut key whatever it is so shift plus delete now tell me this file will be storing under recycle bin no so the file is not going to any recycle bin why because this file is directly we are dropping or directly we are deleting from your computer permanently from your computer permanently so we are directly dropping so that means my file is not going to recycle bin okay now my file is not going to recycle bin suppose you just come out and see to open your recycle bin so what it was showing my recycle bin this folder is empty so that means your test 11 file is not there in the recycle bin why because we are directly dropping our test 11 document or file from the computer permanently so how we are going to be dropping this same as it is so now we did in our database okay now we did in our database test 11 okay i am drop drop table table name test 11 and we are passing what now per statement we are passing what now per statement so that what it was happen guys here your test 11 table is directly dropping from your database so that's why it is not showing any object address name in your tab list and the same to same it is not showing any object information in your recycle bin so it means permanently we drop it here so this is a uh, one uh, case in tax if you want to drop your table permanently from your database here so there you can use uh, this command okay na right so these are guys uh, what we called uh, so ddl operations including the future software uh, recycle bin flashback and the next one is what na purge statement okay na right
So this is one language, uh, the commands we completed successfully. And the second language operations we will see. The second language operation is, what is our second language we said? DML operations, okay, DML operations. Okay, the second command is DML operations. In the second language, DML commands. Okay, so we have your commands are insert, update, delete, and the new commands was there in this DML, insert all as well as merge command is there. Okay, right. So let me see the first command is called as insert command. The first command is called as insert command. Okay, right. So in insert command, okay, the purpose here. Yeah, so we know that okay, to insert, okay, whenever you want to insert, to insert a new row data, a new row data into a table, into a table. So there we can use a insert command. So insert command we are using for to inserting a new row data a new row data into table. Okay, now, so that is what it is. Now, now here, but in this syntax, in this command or in the syntax, so what it was happening is here, there are two kind of uh, syntaxes we can follow here. The syntax number one, okay, while you're inserting, there are two kind of methods you can follow here. So first one is what now? So insert into table name, insert into table name, and I'm sending values to, okay, so value number one and uh, value number two, comma, and so on. This is one syntax, guys, we are using. And the second syntax was one more way also, we can insert our data into table. That way is called as what now? Insert into table name, okay? And uh, immediately you have to pass your list of columns. So list of columns, so which column and uh, other, okay. So which columns data do you want to insert your values? So the list of columns you have to pass it now. The list of columns you have to pass it now. And after that you pass values of, uh, so value one comma, value two comma, and so on. Okay, now, so this is the second one. There are two, two syntaxes and you can use this here when you want to insert in data into table. But here, what is the differences in between syntax number one and syntax number two? What is the differences in between these two? Okay, right. So let me see the first example. We will see syntax number one. In this, what it was happened, you can go, go for this. So when you come back in your our table, okay, already we have one table here. Okay, the table is called as initially created the table in our database student is. So student is one of my table, it was there in the database, right? And now this table, if I want to call, okay, so I'm just calling the student, okay, to execute it now, already few records already there, one sign, Hyderabad, and two word, and cadence. So these are the two rows we have it in this table. Okay, suppose I need to insert uh, some more records into this. Uh, so now I'm using insert command. Now. The first insert statement I'm using, insert into the table name is what now student and sending values first. So whenever we want to insert, okay, into student values, for example, I'm inserting now, the how I want to insert along with this body means. In your table, how many number of columns are there guys here? In your table, how many number of columns are there? Three columns are there. One column is a student ID and one column is a student name and one column is a student address. There are three columns are there. And the three columns, okay, we're having in my table, but unfortunately, I'm inserting here, okay. 
So three comma suppose I'm passing here nm. So here carefully observe guys here. In my table number of columns are three, but I am passing here two columns values only I'm passing. So when we are passing two columns values, okay, let you see what it was happening. I'm going to insert this. What it was saying that one error message is showing us. What is error message is not enough values. So not uh, enough values because your table is having three columns. Okay, are you inserting two values? Okay, so what it was saying here, not enough values. In the same platform, guys, here, suppose I'm going to pass, okay, now. So next one is what now in my table address. The address I'm giving now, for example, Mumbai. And now additionally, some value I'm passing 10. In this case, what it was happening, your table columns are having three columns. And uh, I am going to inserting four values now. So your number of columns in a table and number of sending or passing values are not matching. When it is not matching to execute this one, what it was happened guys here, what it was happened here, it was showing here again error, too many values, too many values. So that means what you understand guys here, okay, what you understand here, so whenever you want to insert data into table by using of what the syntax number one. So what the final conclusion here? So exactly, so how many number of columns are there in your table? So exactly that many values only accepted. So more than your columns, we cannot insert. Less than your columns, we cannot insert. So this kind of problems are we are facing. Okay, you know? so that's why. What we want to do exactly, okay, how many number of columns are there in the table, exactly that many values only we need to pass. So now we can see here, I'm passing the three values and three values are successfully accepted. And after that, if you want to call this, okay, now I'm calling now. So one, three, Allen and Mumbai is successfully saved in our database table. So that means what you understand guys here in this syntax number one, so statement of syntax number one, how we can say. So what do you say guys here? In this case, okay, in this case, okay, we we should we should insert, we should insert values, okay, and we should insert values for for all columns, for all columns in a table for all columns in a table without without left any column without left any column. okay now so this is one case it was telling us but you guys sir suppose i want to ask you, sir i don't want to insert all columns values like this i want to insert specific columns values i want to insert sir so whenever you want to insert a specific columns data or columns values then you can use here second method, the method number two, syntax number two, insert into table name and pass your required list of columns and after that values. For example, in that case, what it was happening, you can see. So now I'm inserting that. Insert into the table name is student. Okay, I'm passing here, for example, student ID comma, I want to give it here student name of the second form I'm giving. So after that, we are passing here values. So here, which columns are you selected in this case? Okay, either three columns are you selected, or two columns are you selected, or one column you can select, that's your wish. Okay, so but which columns you mention, which column names you mention in this query? Okay, those values only I can insert, and that will be accepted. So four and student name is, so okay, student name is what now? Jones, I'm passing. So now in this example, what I'm doing guys here, I'm inserting only student ID and the student name, these two columns data only I'm inserting. Okay, now these two columns data only we are inserting. So, and which column we left here? Student address column is left here. Student address column is left here. Okay, now, so student address column is left here. So let you see, I'm going to execute this one. It will be accepted, one row is created. 
but which column are you left in my table? So that column value by default, what it was taking here, null value. So let you come back and see. Now we can see. So the student ID number four and student name is Jones, that's okay. But can you see student address are not inserting any value. So whenever you want to miss, okay, the value of any one column in the table. So the column by default, what it was taken guys, nice. So this is second scenario, we will be able to use it now, okay? This is the kind of method for syntax. In this syntax, what do you understand now? In this syntax, what do you understand now? So you will be, okay, so what do you say? In this case, In this case, we are inserting, we are inserting values for, we are inserting values for required columns only, required columns only. Okay, this is one point. Okay, and remaining columns and remaining columns, remaining columns are, uh, what it will take by default, remaining columns are, are taking Okay, so what it was taking here, uh, taking null, taking null by default. Okay, so the remaining columns will take by default null values. So this is second scenario we can use, okay? But in this uh, statements, either syntax number two and syntax number one, what it was happening guys here, okay, one time we are inserting a specific and only single row data we are inserting into our table only single row data. So any one single row data we are inserting into table, okay? So, but suppose I need to insert multiple rows and the multiple rows, how to insert it into my table, continuous manner. Okay, whenever you want to insert the multiple tables continuously, okay, into your database table. So how we can insert it, okay now? So that scenario, if I want to do it, uh, okay, if I want to do it, uh, there I can use uh, one operation here that is called it. Substitutional operators I can use by here. So substitutional operators we should be using. So in this operators and substitutional operators, whatever it is, operators. So by using all these substitutional operators, I can insert multiple rows into a table, continuous manner I can insert. Okay now, so what we're saying here, so inserting, Okay, to insert, okay, multiple rows data into a table, into a table. So what is now continuously? What it was here, continuously you want to insert. So whenever you want to insert uh, continu or continuously, if you want to insert here continuously, so there you can use a substitution operators. And these substitution operators are two types, guys. One is called as a single ampersandage. It's a one thing. Okay, so this is one. And second one is called as a double ampersandage. This is the second one. So single ampersandage and double ampersandage, difference is what's up. Okay, difference is what's up. So here, when I'm using single ampersandage, that means what happens? User can insert Okay, user can insert values, okay, values to call up, insert values to columns, okay, which way dynamically way, so dynamically, okay, dynamically, so dynamically means what it was happened as, well. so for every new row, whenever I'm inserting into my table, for every new row purpose, okay, we can change our values for column dynamically, okay, so when you want to go for, to insert a new row <laughs> into columns, okay. And I need to dynamic, dynamic means what now? We can change. So continuously we can change your values one by one. So first row I inserted. After that second row, second row when I inserted, I can change my values of columns. Like third row values I can change. Fourth row, fifth row, sixth row, like that. How many rows are you inserted one by one continuously into your table? For every row wise, you can change your values. So that kind of possibility was there when I'm using single ampersandage. 
Okay, that's why user can insert values to columns dynamically. Dynamically means changing. Okay, now so changing is possible. Double ampersand is what now? User. Okay, here what happened? The second ampersand is. So when we insert, we can insert values to columns, but the values are fixed values. Okay, user is inserting values to columns, to columns in which a manner here columns or or fixed manner or columns as what now fixed fixed values. So I can insert but those values will be fixed. So fixing means what now? User is inserting values to columns, but that are fixed values so that we cannot change. So once in the first attempt, which value are you inserting into the double ampersand case of column? So that value cannot be changed. That value cannot be changed. So if I want to change sir, what we want to do, if I want to change sir, what we want to do means that if we want to change, if we want to change, if you want to change, okay. So only the solution is what now? If you want to change value, only the solution is what now? Then exit. You need to exit. You need to exit from Oracle database. You need to exit. From Oracle database. Okay, now. So if we want to change value, okay, for a column, then only the solution is uh, you need to exit from Oracle database. Okay, now. Right. Let you see, guys. I will show you some example. You will get some idea. So syntax number one. Let you see, guys. So insert into. I'm sending your table name. So table name and sending values of. Now I'm passing single M percentage of column name one, comma, single M percentage of column name two, comma, and so on. Okay, so this is single M percentage I'm using on my columns to insert multiple rows data continuous manner without any break. Okay, right. So this is the syntax here, and let you come back. Present in my table, how many number of uh, rows means present? I have your total four rows that we have. Now, let me see, I'm inserting now. So when I'm inserting the new rows into this, okay, how I can insert it here, observe this. So insert into the table in a student and sending values of. So I'm using a single ampersandage for student ID column and a single quotes, single ampersandage uh, for student uh, name column and single quote. Yes, single quotes. Why I'm using means it is a varchar. Okay, this column data type is a varchar. Okay, right. And s address. So single ampersand is s address. S address. Okay, now. Now, so in this example, what I'm doing here for each and every column wise, I'm using single ampersand is. For each and every column wise, I'm using single ampersandage. And let you come back and see to execute it now. What it was happening, you can see. So dynamically, it was asking. Can you see dynamically is asking enter value for student ID? Okay, fine. Student ID is five. Student name is asking. Yes, fine. The student name is I'm passing yes, Smith. And next it was asking student address. The student address is empty. So now what it was happened, guys, here, the three columns values, okay, are asking by your server dynamically at your runtime level, at your execution level. So now I was passed here, student ID, student name, and student address also I passed. After that, I just go to enter. What it was showing, guys, here, one row is created. And now I need to continue this data to insert into my table then I have to use your slash. So what is a slash? So why we are using slash and what is a slash means? Your slash is nothing but, okay, I'm using your what, no, slash. A slash is nothing but, what purpose we are using slash means? Sir? Slash is nothing but to execute, to, to execute, 
to execute the last the last executed the last execute that means to re execute to re execute the last executed the last executed command the last executed command in spl plus editor in spl plus editor okay now in spl plus editor whatever the last command are you executing the same last command when you want to re execute again and again again and again again and again so there we can use a slash there we can use a slash so to re execute the last executed command in sql plus editor so that purpose we can use a slash also for example here come to okay can you tell me in my sql plus editor what is my last executed sql command what is my last executed query guys in sql plus editor which one is the last one yes insert command this is this is the last command we are executed right insert into or insert command. so this is my last command which was executed in my sql plus edit okay now right so now that is, that query again re execute again then i'm use i don't want to write again query i'm just passing slash and pass so i don't want to write again query if i'm writing again query it's a time consuming process right so that's why i'm using here slash when i'm using slash what happen internally the same lastly executed command whatever it was there in the sql plus editor the that query again your server will be re executing again so re executing again and let you see re executing again and now we enter now we enter what happened see the query is executed and again it is asking to me okay enter value for student id okay right i am i am entering again the number is what now 6 again name is asking so i will be entered the name is warner the name is warner again it was asking address the address is up so now what it was happening guys here i inserted again one more row and can you see for each and every row wise i'm passing different values i'm sending here five smith mp i'm sending here Yes, six Warner and UP. Different values are passing. Let you continue again. So I'm using again slash. Again, student ID is asking seven. Student name is asking. For example, student name is James. And student address is, for example, it was asking here Kerala. Okay, again I executed. So continuously, the continuous process. Like how many rows I'm inserting continuously? Three rows I'm inserting. continuously how many rows i inserted here three rows i inserted okay now so like this if you want to insert continuously into your table so you can use this uh, single amp percentage and single amp percentage can you identify here for every new row wise for every new row wise okay it was inserting different values of your pass so first row different values we are sending next row different values we are sending next row different values are same so that means what you understand here for every insertion of a new row data for every insertion of a new row data into table so the values can be change the values can be change okay na? so this is called as a single amp percentage and after that let you come guys here after that let you come out here now i'm going to call my syntax for you select the star from my table name is what now student let you see the three rows are successfully re inserted so five smith mp six warner up and seven james kerala okay now we are inserting the raw information so this is what dynamically we inserted and continuously we inserted right so this is one category of this guys okay now this is one so this is single amp percentage you can use like this okay we can use like this when we go for single amp percentage of example 
Okay, right. The continuous man we will be go for this. Suppose can I go for okay double m percentage? You can see what it was happening. You can see. So in come to syntax number of the two. I am passing here double m percentage. What it was happening? You can see this. So insert into table name. Okay, no? and I am passing values of. Suppose I'm passing here double M percentage of column one, comma, and so on. So in place of single M percentage, for example, I'm passing here double M percentage. If I'm passing now, what it was happening, you can see guys here. Okay, no? right. Let you come out and see. Okay, now I'm trying to insert it now. Carefully observe. So insert into student, okay, sending values. Here, careful observe. So student ID purpose, I'm using single campus in this guys, comma. Student name purpose also, I'm using single campus in this student name. And but come to your student address is there now. So student address purpose, what I'm using here, I'm using your double campus in this I'm using. For which one for student address follow purpose. Okay, fine. So here carefully observe. Student ID, single M percentage, student name, single M percentage, and student address, okay, double M percentage we use. So that means the user has a chance. I can dynamically send values for student ID column and student name column. So dynamically, I can send my values. But when come to student address, at the first attempt, the first attempt, which value are you passing here? So that will be fixed now. That will be fixed now. Suppose if you want to change that value, only the command is what now? Exit from your exit from your Oracle. Okay. Oracle data. Okay, let me first observe that. Okay, okay guys. So first time, this is first time I'm in executing my query. Okay, so it was asking enter value for student ID. Okay, fine, eight. It was asking student name. Okay, fine. The student name is Scott. And the carefully observe first attempt only asking address. First attempt only asking address. So it was asking. So enter value for student address. Now suppose I'm passing my student addresses. So Pune, I'm sending. When I'm sending Pune. Okay, when I'm sending Pune, what it was handling, you can see. Okay, fine. So first row successfully created one report. Let you continue. I'm continuing here, but continuous. What it was happening, you can see carefully. I value I pass nine. Asking student name also. So I'm asking student name is, for example, Miller. And let you see what it was happen. I'm going to exit, or that is executing now. What it was showing as, it was asking to me student ID and student name only asking. But it doesn't ask me, the student address is not asking. The student address is not asking. But what it was there, guys, here, can you identify what it was there? Pune. Previous value. Previous value, what now? Pune. Pune is going to be showing. Up. Same to same. For example, next time asking. So enter student ID. Okay. 